Hey guys, I'm Justin Gobi Fields and I partnered up with ArtStation and MSI to give you guys a tutorial and a look at their new laptop, Creator 17. I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, this is uh, Justin Fields. I'm a concept designer for film, TV, and games. And I'm giving a test run here of MSI's new laptop, the MSI Creator 17. And I gotta tell you, man, this thing is super blazingly fast. I'm using ZBrush here. This is sped up just a little bit, just so we can make it through the whole tutorial. So I'm using ZBrush here on the MSI laptop, and I gotta say, the first thing that I'm 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 noticing is that it it, it it's pretty fluid. Like I'm not having any kind of a slowdown or anything like that. Got plenty of RAM and 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 all the accoutrements, if you would say. Um, but yeah, it, you know, just getting into it, this is definitely a extremely fast laptop, and I was very surprised by its performance uh, in in doing a piece of artwork. So uh, today, you know, we're going to be going over a little bit of uh, doing like maybe a Halloween, you know, maybe a Dungeons and Dragons, a uh, little creature monster kind of a character, uh, something spooky because it is October. But yeah, you know, I, I you know, the the first thing that, that I got to say about this this laptop as I'm going and, and as I'm sculpting is like it's an extremely lightweight laptop and you know I do a lot of traveling and I do a lot of demos uh, all the time and this thing is super lightweight and I really really like it and the screen is super vibrant. I don't think I've ever seen a laptop with uh, this high quality of a screen on it. It's it's pretty fantastic and it comes with plenty of USB ports which you know for us artists you know you gotta you gotta plug everything in to get everything going right. But anyways we'll, we'll get back to you know kinda like the tutorial of what we're doing here right. So I you know I just opened ZBrush and uh, I'm just blocking out some simple shapes and forms and I, and I think I'm gonna go for a multi-eyed creature maybe a um, beholder style character that uh, you know most of uh, us fantasy uh, tabletop game players enjoy is the iconic beholder um, I'm gonna put a little bit of my spin on it so it'll be a little bit different from something that we've seen in the books or in films or in games and etc cetera, etc cetera. But um, I'm just going to sit here and just kind of talk to you a little bit about my design process. So right away, you know, I just jumped right into ZBrush, opened up a sphere. Um, and, you know, a lot of my, my creatures, they usually start from spheres, especially if it's a, if it's a conceptual uh, bust of a creature or something like that. Because if I need to go in and create a body for something, like I, my methodology is is that there's so many ways to do the forms of a body of a creature and stuff like that that I usually want the client or, you know, whomever I'm making this for to be happy with their the, the, the important choices, right? And that is the character. Whether, you know, whether it's a monster or creature or something that's going to be, you know, animated or, you know, that can emote. I want to focus on the most important thing, and that's usually the head and the shoulders and the top torso area. Everything else, once you've nailed that down, in my opinion, everything else comes so easily, you know, uh, and, and, puts, and, and the design comes together a lot faster when you're not focusing on things that may not be that important to the design. So here I am, I'm, you know, in ZBrush, just using a clay, this is real simple, clay build-up brush, using the Dynamesh settings. Um, if you're familiar with ZBrush, uh, it's a digital sculpting platform that is, is, in my opinion, the best in the industry at this point in time. I primarily do a lot of my work in ZBrush, and I use Keyshot as well. I think for this tutorial, we're just going to do a really quick creature sketch and I think this, you know, this is sped up three times. So I think that the total amount spent uh, on the sculpt and the painting at the end was about three hours, three to four hours. Just now I'm just kind of laying in some foundation where I feel like the skull would be making sure that there's a little bit of motion uh, around the eyes so that if I wanted to have him emote, he could emote. Now, 
Now I'm just kind of laying in a little bit of sketchy sketch lines, right? I'm using the damn standard brush here, which, you know, can be the probably the, you know the best sketching brush that ZBrush has to offer inside of its platform. And you know, as we're going over this tutorial, um, something I want to say is like you know I'm I'm trying to keep everything stock um, and not use too many customized tools so that you know if you guys want to follow along and make your own beholder that you can kind of just follow along. I tend to do that a lot with my demos. I've made a lot of custom brushes and a lot of custom tools, and and rather than perpetuate like a mythos of you know oh it, it's it, you know it's all these special tools that he's making it's like no you know you don't need anything special it, it helps and it speeds up the process for sure but you, you gotta know the basics before you can jump in to start doing you know you know customized UI doing any you know customized brushes and stuff like that and here I am I'm just making sure that I have a back face masking on my clay buildup and essentially what's that that means is that on the clay buildup brush is that if I'm getting close to a thin surface it's not going to pull from the other side which can lead to a bunch of errors and issues later on down the road so we don't want to do that so I'm just kind of making sure that that's there uh, I'm looking at some reference off screen here and we're getting back to like just kind of forming out that face that sculptural detail trying not to get too detailed too quick you'll see me you know sculpting out some shapes smoothing them down sculpting them in smoothing them down building up that detail over time is uh, is always a good practice to get into so now I'm just kinda laying in some extra wrinkles because I think I'm gonna put you know two extra eyes along the the main eye there um, and I I think you know at this point I was thinking I'm only gonna make it like a three-eyed beholder other than the eye stocks that will eventually come in later I know I wanted to kinda do a little bit of a twist on the variant uh, of of the classic beholder so I you know I'm just kinda like playing around here just seeing what kind of shapes I come up with I've made a couple of beholders in the past and I I always tend to, you know, make sure that the eye stalks all kind of come out of an area of rest behind, you know, the the creature's head. The beholder is is such a weird unique creature that, you know, is one of those monsters that really really I I guess made me fall in love with, you know, the I guess the I guess the amount of creatures and the variance and the and the uniqueness of the creatures that exist in the D and D mythos and you know for those of you who don't know D and D is Dungeons and Dragons I'm sure most of you know that which has become a huge popular thing right now you know and, and I'm you know I'm just sitting here sculpting away and and I, I just can't I can't get over how fast this this is on this laptop ZBrush primarily uses a lot of power in the processor and in the RAM department but visually I, I'd say that this uh, this RTX uh, 2070 uh, NVIDIA graphics card is really really nice and I don't see a single you know pixel uh, looking at the UI of this this laptop and I believe it's a 17 inch laptop yeah um, it's an LED screen and it's really 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 great I'm really digging it Uh, here I am just adding a little bit of uh, um, details to the, the top of the head. I'm like, you know, well, i got to make sure this thing can breathe, so maybe he breathes out of the top of his head. We'll see how that goes, you know. And I'm thinking, like, visually, 
you know, maybe there's like some sort of, you know, crocodile kind of moment where it could be coming out of water and you see that kind of a shape first along the big eye. Um, definitely pulling in a lot of the skin references and detail from a movie called Big Trouble in Little China. Um, in that movie, they had a version of a beholder, uh, and that it was directed by John Carpenter, I believe. I think they are making a remake of that, but I'm not sure. Just getting in here and just quickly kind of laying in where I want an inner lip to be. And, and now I'm like trying to figure out, like, do I want to have separate gums? You know, when I, when I do sculpt out the teeth, um, I, I think I eventually do go with that as a, as an option. Now, I, you know, when I sculpt and, and do all these things, like, for concept design, I, I know that most likely they're going to want to see what the back looks like. Um, and I do know that this is, you know, this is just for a quick illustration that I'm doing this for ArtStation and MSI. So I, I know that they're not going to see the back, but, you know, ZBrush is one of those things where, you know, if you're just having fun... You're just going to you're just going to sculpt it in anyways. I want to make sure that, you know, the detail and it's a complete design. Sometimes, you know, in production if you haven't gotten a sign off on a specific shape or or creature or something like that, it's kind of best just to kind of leave leave the back of it alone because that's that's time wasted, right? I'm doing this just because, you know, I enjoy sculpting a lot. It's very, you know, therapeutic, I would say, you know, just kind of getting in there and just making some shapes and coming up with a lot of the, the shape language on the fly, but also looking at reference, very important to do. I looked at a little bit of reference for this guy, but for the most part, uh, it was just like kind of just winging it all out of my head, you know. Uh, just making some little nooks and crannies so that this thing feels gross when it's, you know, floating by. It's got all these little muscular sacks of uh, grossness and fleshy bits. And I'm just kind of just going through with the damn standard brush and making sure that, you know, you can see these these shapes very well. And... Now I'm I'm just kind of playing with the silhouette of the details and using the move brush to kind of just move things around. I I don't I don't believe I've subdivided at all. I've just done this straight from the a, a single dynamesh. And when I was first starting out, something that I wanted to, you know, talk about is you know, when you're when you're first getting into ZBrush, like, you know, and you learn about how to, you know, subdivide your mesh and you get more and more surface area to carve and sculpt details in that was my first mistake you know you want to solidify all your form language at a lower resolution early early on and you know th this is me literally just installing this on this laptop uh that took no time at all to get zebrish up and running on this and I think even now, like I'm, I'm realizing that I'm not even using the full resolution of this dis of the display. Um, so here in a minute, I think you, I figure that out and I pause it and then relaunch ZBrush with the UI at a much uh, larger state. Now I'm just kind of playing with the expression of, you know, how do I want his mouth to be open? I'm imagining how the teeth are going to be. I kind of want a very menacing, scary looking shape, you know, and I, I want to make sure that there's those forms have a little bit of musculature and, uh, you know, uh, shape language behind it to make sure that it can support this big of a jaw. The beholder is kind of a stylized caricature of, you know, like a a mad ball kind of a creature those are old 90s toys but um you know it's a very simple shape with complex things going on but i still want to use my anatomy knowledge of you know the work you know how a, a jaw works on a creature 
um, and just you know make sure that that's being supported by the sculpture work that I'm doing. carving out a little bit more of the mouth. I really want to make sure that feels like it has a deep cavity going on. Just adding extra eyeballs here. Putting it in place and then I will mirror and weld it across there. So now I have an extra set of eyeballs here. And I can go in here and start to kind of carve out some shapes that will um, reinforce the idea that you know this has a you know each each eye has a level of detail, uh, an eye socket, if you will. They're not just placed randomly. That that the anatomy around it supports uh, the blinking of an eye and stuff like that. Now in D&D lore, coming around a corner in your dungeon with your friends that you're playing uh, and catching a beholder is probably one of, you know, or not catching a beholder, but seeing a beholder pop out is probably one of the scariest moments because they are insanely, insanely powerful. You know, they, they have different abilities, different, you know, long range spells that can cast from each different eye and usually they have about 10 eye stalks so each 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 eye does something different so it's a it's a world of a hurt it's not the easiest thing to come across for sure and you know it's one of those things you know like i could I could honestly stop right here and start painting or start sculpting in the teeth. But like I said, you know, it, sculpting to me has always been so much fun to get in there and rotate around, you know, an object and really design something in a physical 3D space. I, I, I've just, I just, I fell in love with it. Like the moment I started doing it, you know. Uh, I went from clay sculpture at, uh, you know, the Noman School of Visual Effects right into learning how to use ZBrush to create concept art or illustrations out of it. And from there, it went on to 3D printing and everything in between, you know. I really, really enjoy just sculpting uh, random things and testing out seeing what things would look like in different rendering engines really trying to focus on more character work these days like motivations and how do i how do i make sure that i i you know like like for this character you know as an example you know i i want this thing to feel menacing i don't want it to feel like silly to look at i want it to feel dangerous so it's like okay well i want to make sure that his expression dictates that so you know little little surface tricks you can do squinting the eyes making sure the shapes are aggressive shapes etc etc you know just sculpting in some more little breathing points looking at a little bit of um alien uh, shapes, little organic shapes. But I have to be I have to be aware that you know I have to put the eye stalks coming out of somewhere, right? So I don't want to over detail, which is a tendency to do, you know. It's so easy to just get lost in in creating a, a highly detailed piece in ZBrush where, you really, really can get carried away. You want to make sure that you have areas of rest. You know, uh, I, the good rule of thumb is like, you know, 
70% detail, 30% area of rest, or 30% you know high detail and 70% area of rest. So I, I, I'm looking at this guy right now, and I think that I start to smooth out a lot of things because I, I, I feel like I've over-detailed him at this point. I'm looking at what shapes that I, you know, do I like these shapes? Do I like these you know, these, these organic, you know, armor pieces and muscle structures. Like if I see something that I'm not really digging, I can always smooth it out, you know? Keep going back to the, the top of the head. It feels very cling on to me. So I'm going to be sculpting a little bit more of that in there. Now I'm adding a, a cube, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and kind of place in there, and then I'm going to move into place after I dynamesh it, right? So now that I've dynameshed it, I've smoothed out the corners, I'm just going to kind of block in where I think it's, you know, this, this strange creature has gums, right? I want to be able to detail them separately and, you know, just kind of grab a clay brush and start to kind of play with the shape there, kind of rough it up and get it ready for teeth, you know. Teeth are going to be the fun part, you know. We're going to lay a lot of teeth in here. We're going to try and keep them we're going to try and keep it not symmetrical. So we're going to turn symmetry off so that we get a really really unique set of teeth. And I think I do that for both the upper and the lower. So now I'm just making sure that there's enough there for me to play with. Just kind of blocking stuff in there. It looks kind of funny. It looks like he's, you know, he's got dentures in. Or he's smiling at this point. But I promise you, he's going to get menacing here pretty quickly. Lots of teeth and lots of eyeballs are not, you know, something that you hope to see coming around a corner. So here we go. I added another subtool, just doing the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and dynamesh this thing here. Grab our move brush, smooth it out, kind of block it out. I don't need to be perfect. I just want to get something in there that fills that, that gap and follows that structure. Just using clay buildup to kind of smooth out and get rid of that, that, that cubic shape just to kind of use that as a starting point. Just laying it in there, pushing and pulling. It's a lot of stuff uh, you do in ZBrush. You just kind of grab, mix and match. I just I just roughed in some real quick eyeball detail. I saw some reference that I really liked how they they designed the the eye. So I kind of took two or three designs and then merged them together to kind of give it a unique looking eye. And now I'm working on the the teeth, and I want to make them menacing and sharp. So I'm, I'm I'm making sure that I sculpt out a lower half of the tooth, right? Because it the teeth don't just sit on top of the gums; they go in deep into the gums and attach themselves to the jaw, right? So I'm just kind of you know using the clay buildup brush to kind of give me a really cool shape. Just kind of pulling that down. You know, playing with some of the the sizes, and we're getting close to something that I like here. And I'm thinking like, oh, well, maybe he's got two big ogre teeth, and maybe those will be the same. But all the other teeth will be messed up, right? So we're going to give him a little bit of uh, an overbite. And we'll, we'll mirror and weld that as well. 
Now I'm just kind of looking around. Oh, maybe it's maybe they're too big. Maybe they're too stylized. Let's let's kind of play with the shapes here. And now I'm going to go back to my sub tool that was for the gums. And now I can kind of build that shape up around that tooth so that it makes sense visually that it could hold that 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 size of teeth, I guess. It's okay that it comes out a little bit past the bottom jaw. Um, you know, some some animals have that ability where their lower lip can kind of come down uh, underneath their jaw and kind of hang there when when needed. I'm kind of thinking like maybe these are venomous, so maybe that could be something there. I'm just kind of going back to the, the main body now, and I've subdivided a little bit now. I've added some, some scaling, some detail work. And I've kind of laid down a little bit of a, some groundwork for where I want the teeth to be. And I think now is about the time where I'm like, you know what? I think we're just going to keep adding some more teeth here. Let's focus on getting all the teeth in there. Oh, symmetry is not on, so i got to make sure that I hit mirror and weld so that that copies over. And now I'm going to dynamesh it again and make sure my symmetry is on. Just kind of blocking out a tooth. I, I kind of want this to be a little bit more sharper. Using the pinch brush. Just playing with the shape of it, really. getting in there with the uh, the damn standard carving out a little bit of pieces and now I'm going to kind of rearrange my tooth here and start to kind of duplicate this but I want to make sure that it, it kind of falls into line but you know you gotta make sure that you know when you're making these creatures that they don't look like they've gone to the dentist you know there's no braces for these monsters that's my terrible dad jokes. All right, so you know I'm I'm playing with the shapes, the sizing, uh, as I'm duplicating this around, um, and I know that you know you can see some of the bottom parts sticking out of the gums, but that's okay because the gums are a separate subtool, and I can go back in there and make sure that they're all covered by that little fleshy, little um, sculpture shape, right, and you know, you could mirror and weld this over, um, but then it's going to look really symmetrical. And I wanted to make sure that the teeth were not that, you know. I wanted to make sure that it was kind of all over the place. You don't know what you're going to be getting. You know, and then, you know, your first initial reaction on a tooth or, you know, on a mouth like this is like, that's not a friendly creature. That's not. It's time to run. That's a lot of teeth, right? We're getting about halfway through this tutorial um, and this recording of it, and you know, just just placing more and more teeth, changing up the sizing, direction. And I think I think for a quick moment there, I was I was like, I'm gonna mirror and weld this just to save time and then I think I changed my mind. I'm like, nah, just do it all by hand. It's fine. It's fun, right? It's not work if you do what you love. I 
Now I'm like really giving one one extra big tooth on one side. Make sure I'm placing all these things. And I'm really impressed by this this laptop. It's 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 a very powerful machine. When we go to do rendering, uh, I don't imagine that I'm gonna have any problems whatsoever. I look forward to testing this thing out a little bit more in the coming days, but for right now, this is just my first initial read on this laptop and its capabilities. It's got a lot of RAM. I it, For how thin it is, I, I just can't believe that there's a 2070 in there. But uh, hey, it, it, they fit it in there. The real test is going to be if I can put any games on this thing and see how it does. But, you know, that's a different kind of a video. But this one, you know, so far I'm pretty impressed with the, the amount of power that, that, that is uh, crammed into this machine. And, uh, oh, there I'm, there I'm kind of changing the size a little bit, shrinking the teeth down. Because I felt like the, the teeth got a little too big and a little stylized, right? So... I'm just taking a look, I'm moving things along just a little bit, and back at to reshaping of the teeth here. And now we're now we're gonna adjust the gums to kind of make them feel like they can hold this large tray of of knives, so to speak. And now it's time to start thinking about. The top row, right? I got a big mouthful of teeth here. Smoothing this out, just trying to give a visual reference of where I might want to place some of the teeth so that they feel a little bit more natural to that top gums. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, I've sculpted out some tentacles for placement and I've sculpted out one eye with a lot of detail, right? So now I can duplicate that kind of put that in place along those tentacles um, I've even added some extra eyes on the, the the top of his head and I did the top row of the teeth just the same way as I did the bottom row just for time saving you know we didn't need to show that because we already kind of went over the process of how I made the teeth So this is kind of, you know, after all the time uh, that I've spent in ZBrush, um, you just kind of pick up on certain things. You're like, you know, oh, like like the teeth, right? Like I could have sculpted out each tooth individually very different from the next, right? But I, I know that I didn't have to, right? So it's like you got to kind of choose your battles, I knew that I was going to sculpt out the tentacles relatively the same way. So I knew that, you know, I could just texture the, the tentacles really quickly and easily. But I didn't want to sculpt each eye to be different. But what I knew that I could do is I could simply duplicate the eye, move it into position, and change the angle, change the size and the shape just a little bit, just to kind of move it around um, and get some unique attitude. But I wanted to make sure that it was all kind of looking, you know, towards the, the right side of the canvas, his left, I guess. Because um, I didn't want to do a straight-on shot of the creature. I wanted to kind of have him, you know, take a look and, and be looking at the camera. There we go. Moving the eye just a little bit. So he's looking at you, right? Like he had just come around the corner in a in a dark, murky cavern. 
So I'm at a point now where I'm, I'm adding all these wrinkles in to the tentacles. And I'm using a standard brush uh, with an alpha and a brush um, and, a, and a different spray to kind of spray that texture all over. Um, and I'm kind of testing it out on just, just one tentacle because I want to make sure that it gets the feel that it can move around in any direction. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm keeping an eye on what textures I am using. Um, and I think I end up going with just using, I, I want to keep it with just two brushes, right? Uh, I don't want to go too crazy um, because it's very asymmetrical at this point. And I just want a little bit of surface detail. So I'm going to use the soft concrete brush, which is a great brush to kind of lay in some really alien looking uh, surfaces. Um, you know, you, you can play with the intensity, smooth it out, do it again, smooth it out, do it again. You get some really great results. Um, so now I'm just making sure that I can, I can sculpt this the way I want for every tentacle and just kind of keep that in, in mind, right? I think ultimately, like, you know, doing the, the, the wrinkles and the scratches um, kind of get, gets ran over by the detail of, you know, this soft concrete brush because it really looks like almost like a snake-like texture, um, which I, I feel gives kind of gives the, that Medusa vibe to a beholder. So, yeah. So, you know, now I've, I've kind of just isolated the tentacles just so I can quickly lay down texture. I and mean, this process doesn't take too long. I noticed, oop, I got two tentacles that are kind of merged into one right there. But that's okay. Uh, we're not going to see that anyway. So I can, I can easily fix that later if I decide to, say, make this a 3D print or anything like that. I think I'm contemplating right now, should I fix this? And I'm just like, you know what? Nah, it's okay. You're not going to see it. So don't sweat the small stuff right i'm just gonna hurry up and get through texturing what i know you can see from the angle in which i'm going to choose now i i have a pretty good idea of what angle i'm going to go with but i'm going to go ahead and make sure that i've got that texture kind of going across all surfaces um that i like and i'm also i think i'm realizing that you know i i don't like how it kind of gives just like mil millipede kind of a bug or, or a potato bug kind of a feel to the eyes. And I feel like I want to, I want to give those eye stalks, you know, the ability to blink, right? So I think here in a moment I will start to sculpt out one, like I'll, I'll, I'll append another sphere and uh, sculpt out some really quick details um, around the eye because I realize it's just going to take too much time to kind of go back in there and do every single one and not have symmetry on, right? So I'm thinking here, maybe the best part to do, or the best way to do this is to simply just add a sphere, sculpt out what a you know what an eye would look like. Here we go again, right? Just kind of sculpting out the eye I want it to feel similar to the major eye that we have on our beholder just kind of sculpting it in really quickly not trying to go super crazy on on the detail but I definitely want it to make it look like it has the ability to close its eye and have like it some eyelids. So I'm just kind of sculpting using the damn standard some rough shapes because I know that they're smaller than the other uh, than that main eye, and that's the main that's the thing you're gonna look at first, right? So I'm not super worried about it. I kind of want to put these little things, these little dots in there, like a little hinge point. You know, but I think ultimately I just like, you know, it's fine how it is. I think I'm just going to smooth it out and resize it. And now I'm going to just go ahead and I'm just going to duplicate it all over the other eyes. So I'm going to kind of scale it, push it into place. 
doesn't need to be all one mesh because I'm just doing this for an illustration. Just kind of putting it in place, finding out what works. All right, that's that's good, right? That feels feels like it, it belongs there. So now I'm just gonna keep duplicating it. And the reason I'm duplicating instead of, uh, I'm duplicating separate subtools as opposed to just duplicating it all onto one subtool is that I know that maybe I may need to adjust these later. So I wanna keep them separate so I don't have to mask off every single eyeball uh, in order to make a little change. I can just kind of figure out which one it is I want to look at or easy select it and get it done that way. I'm just going to go around placing these where I need them to be. And our our weird little beholder is starting to take shape. I think as I'm doing this, I'm I'm kind of trying to think pre preemptively about like you know what, what color palette am I going to use? And I think ultimately, you know, the the amount of detail here is pretty pretty high detail, but. The color scale, I think, you know, I want to keep it fun but Halloweeny. So, I think I'm gonna have pretty, you know, pretty bright colors, maybe purples and golds. Those are always kind of classic Halloween colors. So now I'm just like kind of taking a look at it. Do I like this where this is going? I might want to turn the angle just a little bit more. Just kind of thinking about like in the future like what am I gonna how am I gonna place this in Photoshop you know how am I gonna render this out what's gonna go on next right so here we are back trying to figure out what kind of angle I want to kind of choose this at because you know all the eyes are on separate sub tools and the main eye is on separate sub tools so I can pose this however I want and then I'm I'm taking the soft concrete brush and just kind of giving those eyelids a, just a really light touch of that scale work so it all feels like it you know it blends in together right and if anything comes across as it doesn't blend well with that shape I can fix that in Photoshop right um, now if I was going to 3d print this out um, I would definitely go back and you know kind of just give it a little bit more love so it looks really good from every angle um, that's the kind of point of sculpture right it's got to look interesting and unique from every angle um, so now I'm just kind of detailing out a little bit more of the eyelids kind of going to each one just real quickly hitting up all of the ones that need that detail just a little bit not trying to waste or spend too much time on it I've got a really good idea of where I want to take this now and the angles that I want to use it at there's so many good angles because he's just menacing right looks really creepy and crazy so now I am taking that the standard brush and using the the wrinkle texture in reverse right I'm adding scratches to the surface just to kind of give it some unique weathering I guess I would say to the creature and I know that I'm gonna do a specular pass in a render to test out how you know how quickly this can go here we go we we'll start rendering now it's pretty quick and I just want something that's gonna catch light right so this is cool this is where I want to go so now I'm going to start blocking in my colors I'm gonna go with a deep purple and uh, with well, like I guess say start with a lighter purple and then choose a darker purple to kind of start blotching in areas and kind of break up that visual color right I think I do this a couple times where I keep going lighter or I'll grab a, uh, a darker brush and going in there and just kind of painting 
in where I feel there'd be a lot of, of areas of motion, making those darker, lighter. I want to keep this a fun creature. You know, if I made him a very fleshy creature, there's a whole process in which I would do things and, you know, I would lay down a different kind of a color palette to begin with and then, then focus on bringing in my purples. Now I'm kind of making sure that everything has the same color, so when I start to switch things up in ZBrush, I'm not going to have that problem of everything changing color so it doesn't look like the colors are changing randomly. Now I'm kind of thinking about, do I want to do purple or do I want to do an orange? I think I'm going to stick with purple and we're going to, I think we're going to make all the eyes orange. Let's, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and lay in some orange colors here. I'm going to fill that object. And because the other eyes haven't been selected or, or filled with a color, I'm going to have to go through and just like I did with all the tentacles and the eyelids, I'm going to have to go through and choose and select each one of those as a separate color, right? I even put in a tongue on the creature, so we're going to see what that looks like in just a moment. So... I've got the angle that I like. I'm going to go ahead and start filling certain things like the teeth with a gray color and the eyes with an, with an orange. Just making sure all of that works, going through everything, filling all those objects, the right objects with the right color, making the teeth gray just for now. And the gums, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with those later. Here I am choosing like a lighter purple. Kind of go and accent some of these things just a little bit. Just kind of make it feel like there's more than one just color that is dominating it, right? So here I am making just kind of like the, the rough edge or the, the beginning parts of where it comes out of the body. Just a little bit of a lighter purple, a little bluish in there. Just lightening it up just a little bit so it feels a little bit separated from the body. Like there's not a large amount of uh, fluids on the inside, right? So you got to make sure that there is main body and that if there's crazy appendages that maybe they're a little lesser of a color. All right. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and mask the cavities, right? So by masking the cavities, what I'm doing is, is I'm selecting all the cracks and crevices and filling that with a darker color. Like right away I can tell that was way too dark. So I am going to kind of reverse, you know, and, and kind of choose a like maybe a lesser, darker color, but... I'm going to go ahead and fill the all those cracks with a nice darker color. And I'm going to do that with all of the subtools. And it really makes all those details kind of come alive very, very quickly. You can do it by hand or you can do it this way. The best is a little bit of both. And, you know, you can kind of see the results there. Uh, especially if you take a look at, you know, that some of the, the tentacles there. You can really see the high parts and the low parts. It really, really blends together quite nicely. So I'm trying to find the, the right angle that I want. I'm going to, you know, find the, the eye that I am working on, that main eye. And I'm going to go in here and just kind of hand paint it. Now, I know that symmetry isn't there, but that's okay. Um, I'm just kind of get in there and paint some extra colors around the edges so that it feels um, like there's a little bit of a gradient around the eye. I want to keep the center of the eye orange, right? But I want to use the outer part of the eye to be red. Black 
blocking in some some darker oranges I'm using a little little bit of a color spray to kind of give some some unique coloring to it give them a little bit of like a bloodshot yellow eye and I don't need to do too much here because I know that I can do a lot of this in Photoshop so now I'm just gonna try and kind of touch up a little bit of these these eyes these these other eyes the the tentacle eyes and hit it with a, a little bit of a lighter yellow in the center before I probably go back and do a little bit of a darker red around the outer part of the eye here I add that same color that like kind of a burnt orange for his gums Just kind of rounding that out or on the outside of the eyes so it kind of matches the center eye. It's got crazy teeth going on. That's what I wanted. We're almost ready to start rendering. And I think I may get a chance to do a few renders of this in Keyshot, but we'll see. I think I think for the for the subject matter and for the time being, I think I'm going to make the decision that I'm probably just going to do it all on ZBrush because I'm feeling like this character is kind of like a stylized character anyways. And we're not going for ultra realistic, but I think, yeah, I think we're going to do it all on ZBrush. So now I'm just going to go back through and just add a little bit of that blue lightened uh, color that we did on the tentacles and kind of apply that all over. Here I'm playing with the materials to kind of see... which which ones I want to make shiny and which ones I don't. So I'm using a basic material too to kind of give it a wet look and then just a basic material for the skin. I think I, I even make the teeth a basic material. To just assigning materials at this point. Got to go through, make them all one type, trying to find my angle here. Doing a real quick test render. Yeah, this is what I'm liking. And now I've got all my renders uh, out of ZBrush really, really quickly. It happened super fast. Uh, I just hit render, grabbed all those different render passes, slapped them together, and started painting immediately in, in Photoshop. So now I'm just kind of adding a little bit of rim lights where I want to make sure you see the shapes of something and breaking them out from you know, uh, possibly getting lost within each other because there's a lot of tentacles going on here. Adding some glows to the eyes. Just, I want to make sure that you can see the edges of the that shape, right? And that's just because, in, and when you render out some of the stuff, it can get lost pretty easily. So I want to go in and make sure that using that lighter color that I've sampled from the image, you know, uh, that I can go in there and just quickly paint that in. Just some edging. Doesn't have to be, ex you know, super, super detailed uh, rim lighting. But I'm just just hitting it, you know, real lightly. And I turn it on and off there just to kind of so I can see the difference that it's making. And it. You know, it's it's also nice to have that ability in in Photoshop because you can you can tell if you're like, oh, am I making the right decision here? Let me turn this on and off. Does it look better without it? You know, uh, it's not permanent yet, so all right. And now that I've I've isolated some of those shapes, I want to kind of make sure that on the inner. Uh, I guess, you know, on the inside of this shape, I want to make sure that light is still catching on certain objects.
here I am just kind of lightening up that rim light selection color and going through and just kind of hitting a couple of the edges that might be a different material sampling some of those whites and kind of going in there and making the tooth sharp that did felt felt kind of rounded off there or adding in little teeth here throughout the mouth now I'm going to start sampling some of these inner colors of the eye and kind of blending that in I'm also going to choose some of the lighter colors of the render and the purples and kind of use that to kind of paint in detail where I want highlight certain sections you know I feel like sometimes that eye gets a little lost the eyelid so I'm going to make sure that I go back and kind of make that a, a little bit of a higher priority detail-wise. Just hitting, hitting some extra rim lights on certain areas. I think it's, it's important to kind of take a look at how things are working. Adding some drool in there. You gotta have drool, right? It's Halloween. Everybody likes candy. It's making sure that it reads like drool. I've got it as a separate layer so I can turn it on and off. If I choose. Now I'm kind of like making sure like oh maybe this thing's slimy, right? I'm sure it's not the the you know the best well kept creature, but I'm just having a little little slimy parts, little cobwebs like action, a little bit of drool coming off. That's always creepy. Adding some more drool. That's always the fun part. Adding a couple like drip points in mid drip. Got to be careful with that because you can do it too much and then it just looks really, really slimy. So now I'm just like isolating it from the background instead of a neutral gray, a neutral gray I went black just to kind of see how that's reacting for the final image but I think for the tutorial I'm just gonna focus on painting the creature getting close to the finish line here for sure I'm just gonna go in here and just kinda accentuate some of the eye details cuz right now right now I think the eyes feel very CG to me so I'm gonna go through and, and kinda make some adjustments Just kind of playing with my layers. I try to keep a lot of layers 
uh, happening in Photoshop. I do not like to paint all on one layer just because I know how clients can be and I also know that I can change my mind. And if I keep a really good structure um, to my my layering system that I can I can always go back in and add things in foreground, midground, background, you know, everything like that. So just adding some more detail. And here I am adding just a, like a linear linear dodge layer and I'm gonna paint in some glows some real subtle glows and I'm going heavy right now but I'm gonna go back through and adjust that with like a fill layer or lower that immensely I just want that subtle glow you know so it was at 100%, and then I, I knocked it back down to like 37. And I think I even go lower. Now I, I've got a, a color dodge layer where I'm going to kind of go around to the eyes and make them feel a little bit different from each other so they're not so familiar to, you know, they don't look like they're just copied and pasted. Even though they're all different angles and they're all looking a different way, it doesn't really feel that way. But I know they're copied and pasted, so I'm gonna kind of make sure I gotta go, go back and hide that magic. Well, you know, I, I think I'm I'm pretty much done with the main image here. Getting close to finalizing this, and I had a really great time doing this tutorial and this, you know, on this new laptop. It was really, really fast and powerful. If you have the means, definitely check it out. Go out and demo it. Check out that laptop. It's super, super great and powerful. And in this last segment, we'll, we'll show you the, uh, the final image. So uh, thank you, MSI, and thank you, uh, ArtStation.